Welcome back to another enlightening episode of Functionally Enlightened. I'm your host, Sharon Surita, and today we have a very special guest joining us. I want to welcome Therese, affectionately known as T, to our show. She's not only a health coach, but she's also a detox your home guru from the Green Living Gurus. With her extensive experience and passion for healthy living, T has been guiding people towards toxin-free homes for over four decades. My type of woman there. We will be speaking with T today, going over her expertise and exploring how she empowers individuals to create healthier and safer environments. From her podcast, Green Living with T, to her line of T's Organics household products, she's on a mission to transform lives through holistic living. Let's dive right in and discuss some of the secrets to functional wellness. So T, if you could begin by letting us know what's your background and how did you decide on becoming a household toxins health specialist? Yes, that's a very good question. And it really was my upbringing in, I'm born and raised in Buffalo, New York, and that's where I reside today. And I grew up in a household with three older sisters and a younger brother. And my mother, not so much my father, but my mother was very in tune with uh, organic food. And she worked at a local co-op in the 60s and 70s when we were young and she was adamant about keeping us away from chemicals and processed foods. And that was when there was a lot of things coming onto the market, cleaning wise, and also processed foods and fast foods. And we did not eat, I can't say any of it. We had to beg for pizza once a week, put it mm -hmm. that way. And that was the night they, Wednesday nights, they would go out for dinner. But so we'd have chores on Saturdays and everything we'd use was vinegar, water, baking soda um, to clean with. And that's how I knew things. And then as I got a little bit older, uh, I started realizing that we were kind of like the abnormal ones. And mm -hmm. then I got called granola head at some point in my life, many times probably. Uh, went to college at Ithaca College in the mid 80s. And I went there with, a, I had a business major and a minor in health, and I really wanted to open up a large supermarket. Now, I was the one in the family that was really into the healthy living, and I had a, a fruit and nut stand in downtown Buffalo. Um, I was an entrepreneur at heart, and my business plan was what everybody knows as Whole Foods. I did not come out of college doing that. I came out of college as a party planner, which is what I was also doing in high school and college. And that industry was just hitting the market. And I've been a, I have had, have an event planning business for the last 38 years here in Buffalo and planned over 700 events, but always on my, uh, my mind and what I've been doing on the side for people uh, just complimentary, was helping people get these toxins out of their homes. And that was a go-to person with many friends and family. And uh, then cancer patients would come to me and, you know, can you help me figure out why um, potentially what is in my home that could be harming me? And so I did that uh, for a long time and loved it and just tinkered in, how can I make this into something I really want to do the rest of my life? And in 2020, I started the Green Living Gurus. I uh, didn't know where I was going to go. I'm still on that path of taking it into a whole nother level. But I do have a podcast, as you mentioned, uh, with over 200 episodes. And I have a product line, a, a all-purpose cleaner and room sprays. And um, so that's where I am today and still helping people and guiding people and coaching people and making sure they understand they uh, how to keep toxic chemicals out of their homes, have a healthy home, and specifically keeping in mind uh, cancer prevention. Nice. So the type of people that generally gravitate towards you, are they, are they those that are experiencing chronic illness, debilitating illness, or do you just get anyone who's interested in environmental health? Um, a lot of people, unfortunately, have health issues, and all of a sudden they start looking at what is causing this health issue. Mm -hmm. Yes, that happens quite often. But, you know, I think people are more in tune these days, and they're starting to realize, like, what is going on with our world, our environment, and there's so much news out there. 
thankfully, because 10 years ago, I mean, I still thought people thought I was a little nutty uh, for buying organic milk or whatnot uh, mm -hmm. and buying organic foods and looking at all the ingredients and everything I put on my body. So now I feel like people are starting to get it a little bit more. It's more mainstream. There's a lot more products out there that are on the market that people can choose from uh, that you don't have to find them in small little stores and, you know, wherever it may be They're main. A lot of them are mainstream now. So that has made life easier. That is getting people to understand they've got to really take their health into their own hands and look at preventing illnesses. Don't don't look at it as trying, you know, oh, if I get it, then I'll deal with it. That's what I try to get people to not do because you really want to look at uh, before you get sick. Right. So as an environmental engineer myself, I was exposed to a lot of chemicals. During mm -hmm. my studies, you know, I was more at looking how I can help degrade things in nature, like break down processes, methane, composting, stuff like that. But I was at the same time exposing myself to all of these chemicals, even mercury in the lab, um, all kinds of mm. sulfuric acid and everything. So now, I mean, that's not the type of chemical we encounter every day, but we are exposed right. to so many toxins. Can you tell me some of the ones that you're on the lookout for that you try to provide people with resources or information on how to avoid them? Yes, absolutely. And I try to tell people to take it slow, first of all. If you want to start detoxing and your your home per se. And the biggest the biggest area that you can make a big uh, probably the biggest difference in is looking at the label and look at if it has the word fragrance on it. Now, this is just personal care products and cleaning products for that matter. So the word fragrance, the to understand why you're looking for the word fragrance, in the 1940s, Chanel Number no. 5 went to our government in the United States and said, we do not want to disclose the ingredients we're putting in our perfume because, of course, everybody will copy it and it's a trade secret. So they came out with this law that if you have the word fragrance on your product, you do not have to disclose what those ingredients are. Well, manufacturers took advantage of this and the ingredients in fragrance, even perfume, I'm not gonna say Chanel number no. five, but I'm not a, a fan of any perfume for that matter. Uh, and so fragrance can be a combination of many, many different chemicals. And some, we will never know what they are. Uh, the fragrance industry is massive. They are, they are in Washington lobbying against anybody trying to change this regulation because it will cause so much uh, um, notoriety and the media will be all over this. I'm hoping someday it happens. It's starting to really gain some traction, but they're fighting it hard behind the scenes. If you saw what they were doing, it's pretty remarkable. But what is happening is the there's a third party company starting to test the fragrance in some of these products, specifically a company called Ballysure out of Connecticut. And they're finding some pretty horrific ingredients in these fragrances. And one ingredient that they have found in the past is benzene. And benzene is a known carcinogen. That's not even like, can it cause cancer? It's known to cause cancer. So uh, they found it in sunscreen. They found it in, I think, shampoos, uh, cleaning supplies. So the word fragrance, and unfortunately, people think that they are using shampoo that has lemon fresh smell or uh, cleaning supplies that have ocean breeze smell or lavender smell or fragrance, whatever they get you on that and they make you think that those are all natural ingredients and they're not because they do not have to tell you. And what's happening also is many of these companies are starting to catch on to this and they will put on the cover of their front label that they use essential oils. And unfortunately, 
people think, oh, essential oils, it's okay. The problem is they only have to use 2% essential oils to say that it's in their product and they can still put fragrance in there. And I've had people come to me before and say, oh, but look, this is fragrance. You know, so I said, but still don't look ever look at the front of the label. You have to look at the back. Does it say the word fragrance? And sure enough, it does. And that can be the word fragrance. It can be the word perfume. It can be the word perfume. Yeah. And they are covering up what is in there. And until that law is changed, I would never buy anything with the word fragrance on it or perfume on it. Unfortunately, it's in so many different products, uh, hairspray, lotions, um, as I mentioned, shampoos, conditioners, laundry detergent. That's my biggest one that I really try to get people. It's the first thing that I try to get everybody to change in their life because they are washing their clothes in chemicals. Even if it's fragrance-free, you still have to look at those ingredients. They are they're going to still want you, because you'll see that all the time, fragrance-free but there's still so many laundry detergents out there that are still uh, using terrible ingredients that you are sleeping in, that you are putting your head up against for eight hours while you're sleeping and it's up against your skin and you're wearing it all day because it's in your clothes. You're using it in your house. So it's outgassing in your home. And uh, lastly, you're pushing it out into the environment, which is also not great for our environment as well. So, and going down the drain for that matter, uh, once it's washed. So laundry detergent to me is one of the most toxic things we can use in our home. And one of the first things you can do to change a lot of uh, getting rid of these horrific chemicals that could be altering so many different things in your body affecting your immune system, uh, affecting your cellular, uh, you know, you're damaging your cellular um, level. So some of them are endocrine disruptors. It's just a whole laundry list. I know people that have changed their laundry detergent and I will add getting rid of dryer sheets, which are just as horrific as the laundry soap. There are alternatives to all of that. And you they they typically are sleeping better. They are because their their body is not trying to fight off all these chemicals and process them throughout the night. Um, many people I've seen wake up without sore throats anymore or uh or um, um congestion. I've seen a lot of headaches. I know a lot of people can get headaches from the laundry detergents. Uh, kids, I mean, their organs are trying to develop, and that's the last thing you want them to be doing is sleeping in chemicals with these very precious organs that are trying to grow and develop. So there, that's the biggest thing. That's the first step that you can do. Now, what I usually tell people to do is take all of your laundry stuff, put it in a box, preferably a bag, <laughs> so you can tie it and so it doesn't outgas in your home and put it in the garage for a month, two months, whatever. Go out and get simple on every shelf right now is a seventh generation. It's not the best, but it's a great step in the right direction. And I know it's accessible to everybody. I personally use a product called Molly's Suds, which I absolutely love. And uh, she's done, the woman that Molly was her daughter that actually passed away at uh, stillbirth. And she went and did all this research, whether that caused the stillbirth or not, she was a nurse and she did all this research and realized how horrific it was, some of these laundry detergents that were out there. So her story is pretty, pretty interesting. And so change, make that change. It's hard for, for families because people get accustomed to scent and they relate scent to growing up. And oh my God, this is like, you think it's like a great thing because you associate it with something. That's what the 
fragrance industry wants you to associate it with. It wants you to associate it with just a being on the ocean or something that, you know, brings in all this positive energy. And so that that is something, that is the first thing that you can do that would really make a big change in getting some of these toxic chemicals out of your house and then out of your home. I mean, out of your body. Absolutely. And you mentioned the family. So if you have mm. children and you're using these, you know, the name brands, there's one that I used for my first child and I've learned better since then, but it was Drift and it has this wonderful odor until you develop odor sensitivities. And then when you go fragrance free, you realize just how much everyone else can not reek in a bad way, but it's just, it's overstimulating and yeah. there's no need. <laughs> so some Yeah, of overstimulating. Thing. Absolutely. It's, and you, you're right. You start to realize like, wow, there is so much artificial scent all over the place and you become very sensitive to it. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I know when people come to visit me in my home, I sometimes have to open windows and make sure the air is running just to get the proper ventilation. So that, that brings me to the air toxicity. So we're exposed to these things you mentioned in our, in our materials. And just to go back to the sleep, because I think it's a very big, big piece of it. Mm -hmm. When we're sleeping, you know, between whatever hours, 10 and six, ideally, maybe, maybe a little bit longer if people are able to get to bed earlier, but um, our, our detox organs are really working hard. So we're, mm -hmm. if we're exposed to these toxins, we're inhaling them. Like you mentioned, we're, we're making skin contact. So dermal penetration, even if you don't see it, it's, it's constant contact and you know, your, your skin is hydrophilic. So you, with oil, things will adhere to your skin. So I'm just thinking of all these exposures and we we've done it, you know, dryer sheets, they stay, they, they the fragrance stays on all of your linens. You know, if you wash your linens every yes. week. It's just a constant exposure. So in my head, I'm thinking, yes, definitely eliminate that, that anything with fragrance, anything with synthetic chemicals when possible. And, you know, we can talk about electronics another time, but <laughs> that's mm -hmm. another thing, electronics in the room while you're sleeping. Oh, yes. But if we, I know you have your own line, your, your Tease Organics line, and it, this is for particularly for cleaning material, cleaning products. Uh, my Tease Organics right now, all I have, it's I'm a very small um, business right now that's just an all-purpose cleaner that I use for everything. I use it for countertops, toilets. Uh, I don't use it for the floor. I use a, a, um, Dr. Bronner's Castile soap. Uh, so it's just an all-purpose cleaner in a glass jar with essential oils. I tell you all the ingredients and it's purified water and organic vinegar. So that's that's a that I started that because I couldn't stand all of the products on the market. Mm -hmm. And there's we do not need 10 cleaning supplies to clean our homes. Mm -hmm. They want you to believe we do, and all the plastic that's being generated with that as well is infuriating because that's that's a whole nother topic we could talk about would be the plastics that we can help prevent. Uh, buying. But cleaning supplies are the second thing that I get people to change in their homes because of the amount of chemicals that are in the cleaning supplies that you are spraying in your home, putting on your countertop, using on your floors. If you have children, babies, getting on their fingers, dogs, same thing, paws, they lick their paws, they're licking the chemicals. It ends up in the dust. The dust collects. It is constant chemicals in your home that you don't see. You can barely smell, but they're there. And those are ones you, in addition to the laundry, that those are two of the biggest things you can do to reduce the toxic load of your house. The Environmental Protection Agency actually puts out uh, put out a report and they said that our homes are somewhere between two and it can even go up to a hundred times more toxic than the outdoor air due to all these different things we're using in our homes. And it also depends on where you live. So then you're, if you live anywhere near a uh, car exhaust, that's coming into your home. And then take into account if your home is 
air sealed tight, which so many homes are, and you're not getting fresh air, you are circulating these chemicals constantly in your own forced air blowing these chemicals into the air that you're breathing in. So it's just something that you want to be aware of. And those are those are two areas that I highly recommend people changing. Hard to do, as we said, with families, because some people are accustomed and also convinced they need to spray these chemicals to kill germs when you're killing good germs, and then you're also harming our bodies, your bodies, and potentially weakening your immune system with these chemicals that are eventually going into your system. So it's just getting people to understand that you don't have to clean your house that way. Our parents never did. My mother had us, as I said, cleaning with vinegar and water. Some people don't like the smell of vinegar, that's fine. But you can, like Teas Organics, you don't smell the vinegar, you smell seven essential oils, which everybody tells me is addictive. So it's, and you can make your own if you really want to. That's how I started. I started making my own and uh, making it as a gift for people. And then I got overwhelmed with it. And everyone's like, you need to start selling this on the market because everybody needs to use it. So, but there's a lot of do it yourselves. And that's how, I knew it as growing up. That's how my mother, that's how they cleaned. And, you know, can't, the rates of cancer is just skyrocketing. And it's in correlation to the thousands and thousands of chemicals that are on our mark, on the market these days and being allowed into all these different products that we're using and bringing into our homes. Yeah. And including, like you mentioned, the bottling. So you use glass. Mm -hmm. That's excellent because you're eliminating the xenoestrogens from the plastic containers. That's right. A lot of people don't even. You know, if you go grocery shopping, nine times out of 10, I'm going to say, well, we'll say 90% of the items that you select are probably housed within some type of plastic, either a clear wrap or plastic mm -hmm. bottle, um, even, uh, even, no, I guess cellophane would also be counted as that, but yeah, with, certain cellophones. Absolutely. Yeah. With, with that, you know, we, we can talk about microplastics. We can talk about all of the toxic chemicals, um, we can have the, the parabens and the phthalates. And, you know, even with our cookware, if we're talking about PFAS, yep. all of that stuff is contributing to chronic illness. And I think it takes a certain amount of chronic illness or imbalances in the body for someone to really wake up to it and realize my body's not able to process this and, and it's just completely overloaded. So for for the clients that I work with, they're usually in a more dire state and it's, it's gone on for so long or they've had some type of acute large exposure that their their body can no longer deal with it. So I'm thinking, yes, this is fantastic. And I love the simplicity of your your product. If you can use it for so many different um, cleaning that mm -hmm. you do in, in an everyday life, that would be fantastic. So um, I, I'm definitely going to put that as a resource out and I encourage our listeners to take a look at the, the product. Um, understand that the essential oils can still leave a nice, pleasant scent in your home and you're getting the quality cleaning. We will Yeah, and, and on top of that, I just want to add that I didn't mention essential oils are also have uh antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral properties. And those are the essential oils I use, such as lemon, ginger, rosemary, uh orange. Was that four? Uh, I can't remember the other ones. They're <laughs> off the top of my head. But just so you know, those are um, cinnamon, clove. Yes. So those are all wonderful essential oils that have these antibacterial, antiviral um, properties. So uh, you don't need to be using uh, all these chemicals that you, you think are necessary. People get so freaked out about germs and unfortunately you're killing other things and harming other things. So it's just something you have to start training yourself that, okay, I don't need that. Put it aside, use something different, start testing the waters. And it's, it's hard for people. I know I, I had one girl, she was so addicted to dryer sheets. She's like, I don't think I can give them up. And then I started 
training her and teaching her on how to give them up, what you can do in and the essential oils, you know, uh, wool dryer balls. Let's put some essential oils on those wool dryer balls to give you whatever scent you want. Um, and and then she eventually came back and said, I can't believe I was even using those. I can't believe how toxic they are. I feel so much better. I don't wake up with sniffly nose anymore. And it just takes time. It's hard. And, you know, I, you just have to start to retrain your brain and your your senses and you will see down the road how much difference it makes. Yeah, absolutely. So people are here, they're working on detoxing their homes. They're eliminating these personal care products. They are changing out their cookware. They're changing out their cleaning. But now we still have the issue where the indoor air it might still be more toxic than outdoor air, it might be more heavy laden with, with all these chemicals. So some people don't have the option to ventilate very well. You mentioned mm -hmm. it earlier that they're living in um, urbanized areas or near industrial manufacturing plants, and we don't want that coming in our homes. So what are the options for the people who can't necessarily ventilate on a daily basis? So simple, easy, first of all, things that you can do in your home to keep some of those toxic um, pollutants out. Take your shoes off immediately when you come in your house. Mm -hmm. Dry cleaning. If you can outgas that dry cleaning outside before you bring it in the home, because there's a lot of chemicals in dry cleaning, do that. Um, I know when I buy new products, such as a pair of sneakers, that smell, mm. I leave them outside for a while. If you, you can, don't leave them in your car. <laughs> Try to, you know, get things to outgas. Think about um, a shower curtain. When you open that, that shower curtain if you've ever opened up one most people have whether you know that smell of that plastic so you don't want to be bringing all these in your home but if you can outgas them outside as best you possibly can or so those are a couple things your your fans in your home your air conditioners your filters that you use in, if you're in an apartment complex um the the if you have any fans make sure your fans those are clean so they're not blowing dirty air in your mm -hmm. apartment or a window uh, air conditioner. Make there's They all have these little filters you can take out, clean them on a daily basis just with water. That's all you have to do and get that dust out that has a lot of pollutants in it. And ceiling fans, critical that you wash those on a regular basis as well. And if you have a furnace of any kind, of course, change those filters too. Now, the if you want the cleanest purified air, I am a huge proponent of air purifiers. And the one that I sell and that I offer 15% off the air purifiers to everybody, and I'll give you that code as well, Sharon, if you want to put that in the yeah, uh, show notes. Sure people would appreciate yeah, that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's the Austin Air Purifier. Now, not all air purifiers are made equal. And the majority of them are made overseas with plastic parts. And they try to put all these bells and whistles on. The Austin Air Purifier, and what you want to look for is really, what is the filter made of? You don't care about everything else. It's the filter that you care about. What is it made of? And what is it getting out? So the Austin Air Purifier is the best to be on the market. It is 100% made in the United States. I'm very lucky because it is made here in Buffalo, New York, uh, which is amazing to me. But I've done a lot of research on air purifiers and theirs are just the top notch filters that you would ever want to buy. Um, we have one in each area of our home, specifically one in our bedroom and I, I, we sleep so much better with that. I keep it on all day and the filter lasts for five years and my husband used to snore. Now he doesn't snore as much, but that's something that if you can afford one of those, invest in it. It's the best investment that you can make. And it's, it's amazing what it can, how it purifies your room. I usually go to people's homes with a, Air, indoor air quality monitor and I will show them 
what is in their home and it'll show levels and then we'll bring in the air purifier and all those levels start to drop of uh, these various different chemicals, VOCs and um, ones you do not want penetrating your home. So that's something to consider as well. That reminds me of when I first relocated to Tallahassee, Florida. It was a semi-new construction. I lived in the, mm. the model home. So I know, you know certain products are, are treated and there's things like formaldehyde even that are embedded in the carpeting. So for people who have mm. carpeting, you know, it'd be ideal to replace it with some hardwoods or anything. But I know how how cost prohibitive that can be. But I, I went ahead and did a study with the university, the local universities here. That we have Florida State and FAMU combined. So their air quality experts came in and they took some samples. And yes, it was definitely something that needed a, ample ventilation. And I went ahead and purchased a, a bunch of air purifiers, like you mentioned, not the Austin Air, but I'm going to definitely invest in that. Um, as you said, um, I believe that that one has a longer lifespan as well. So it's something that you wouldn't have to replace filter as often. Is that correct? Yes. And it's a HEPA grade. So, and it removes 99.7% of um, the uh, VOCs and the different uh, chemicals that you want to be removed. But there's, I mean, I don't know which ones you have. There's other air purifiers. If you already have one, that's great. Make sure you're looking at the filter. Make sure you're, a lot of them do have uh, um the capability of vacuuming and cleaning out um, some of the filters. And it's just pay attention to that because that's key. You don't want that dust and those chemicals building up. So um, the the Austin Air uses quite a bit of uh, carbon and charcoal in their filters. So, um, you know, there's there's other ones on the market and I, I won't put them down. I just I just know what I've done my research on and long term Austin Air, I think, is the best one on the market. Yeah. And I like the whole concept of minimizing waste that we generate for the landfill. But that's another part of, you know, how yes. we see better environmental stewards and be conscious of our products that we're using and what can be recycled, reused and what we have to replace. We have to replace. Absolutely. Um, as we talk about these air purifiers and you you mentioned like making sure they're dust free and in dust it becomes an issue because mold can be harbored within dust and Absolutely. that that can develop into a whole slew of symptoms mold illness they call it um sick building syndrome too because you're being exposed right. to molds um, and, and essentially it's the mycotoxins that are resulting from the mold but in my home, I live in Florida, it's pretty humid most of the year. So I make sure that I have a dehumidifier as well. And prior to, I, I guess I started using one religiously about two years ago. So I, I didn't really make the connection how humid the home would feel with the potential for mold growth. But now that I, I purchased those little meters, you can get on Amazon, very, very cost efficient, very cheap. Um, but they they can let you know if your humidity in the home is above the recommended range. And so the recommendation is, I guess, between 40 and 55 percent, um, whereas before I think I was near 70 percent and I didn't think anything of it. But now I'm, I make sure to run that dehumidifier and I keep my house at around 45 or 50 percent for that. And again, to to prohibit potential for mold growth. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. If you're anywhere near water as well. Um, definitely something to be concerned with for sure. Right. So the types of clients that you've worked with, we know that you've been working with them, coaching them, guiding them. What types of symptoms are they coming to you with when you know that it's probably some type of environmental toxicity going on? Well, some are just concerned with their autoimmune issues and, uh, as I mentioned, um, headaches, uh, un unknown symptoms that really can't be pinpointed mm -hmm. um, to anything. Uh, those are the ones that, those are uh, some Hashimoto's. Um, I really love focusing on cancer prevention, but of course I help people that have had cancer and wants to want to prevent it from coming back again. So those are, um, you know, there's so many different 
illnesses and diseases that these chemicals can be causing or contributing to causing. And it's, uh, it can be anything. I mean, we, we're not even talking about food either. We're just talking about personal care products and cleaning supplies and things we're putting on our bodies, but in our bodies too. So it, it's, it's looking at the whole big picture and really trying to find out what the root causes on the symptoms that somebody might be having. I focus more on the chemicals and all the things that are in your home. Um, yes, I get into food as well because that's a big factor, but um, it's really me. I'm trying to help people understand you need to reduce your toxic load and hopefully these symptoms will start dissipating and going away. And usually they do. Mm -hmm. So with detoxing, we're looking at all of these. They can be small changes. They can be larger changes mm -hmm. that people can make within their homes. And the nice thing is that those things are generally in our control, or at least we have some flexibility in, in making selections. And then, you know, as we get into our healing journey, we can invest further because our health is really ultimately number one. We need to put that first and foremost. Without our health, we can't help support others. We can't help community. And, and that's what life is about, like helping community, being around um, all of your, your peers. So when, when we let our illnesses take over because we're not taking care of ourselves, that eliminates any sense of joy, I'll say. I, I don't know if you work with the clients and mindset practices and things like that. I don't, uh, I, I don't get into mindset practices, but I know that's important. I've interviewed a lot of people on that and how important that is to your overall well-being. Um, it's, it can be, the whole process can be overwhelming. I just try to get people to take it one step at a time, because once they make that first step of removing a certain few things, they start to realize the amount of things that they want to try to reduce the exposure to the chemicals that could be affecting their skin or could be affecting their organs. And so it's a, you know, am I, and, and the thing is also, I want to mention, you pick your poisons, right? You don't, if you I color my hair, I want to color my hair. I don't want to go gray yet. I'm 61. And, but I use the, one of the least toxic hair coloring, which is Madison Reed. If anybody wants to look that up, it's fabulous. I color it myself now. I save a lot of money. Um, and it's a great, great um, hair coloring place that she was so sick of all the chemicals that were being used in all these hair colorings. And they help you online with your color. It's fabulous. I love it. And I can do it at my own leisure. I was, I hated going into having my hair colored and I hated the smell. Yes. So um, I feel like my hair is much healthier too, for that matter. But so those are things like, you know, you don't have to go drastic on everything. You just try to take your time and do the best you possibly can. And I think 99% of the people that I've helped really see the difference it can make in your life and you start realizing, oh my gosh, I can't believe I was doing that for so many years. And you get kind of excited about it. You start learning more about these ingredients that you're buying on the shelves instead of just trusting the front label. You really look at the back label. That is a something, no matter what you buy, whether it's a food item or a personal care product or cleaning supplies, no matter what, a candle, whatever it is you're bringing into your home, look at what it's made of because those are those are things where that can sneak into your house and affect your health. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that. I believe you and I both provide resources on different things people can do system systematically to reduce these toxins or these exposures, and and it's more day-to-day -day things, um, simple, again, simple things that we can we can manage to do within our own homes. But I, I like that your focus is also helping those, the chronic illness warriors or the cancer survivors, because they are exposed to a, mm -hmm. a lot of pharmaceuticals. 
Um, and then some have surgery. So you have anesthesia coming in, you have um, different right. IVs, whatever's going into the IVs. And so those are things that they might not necessarily be able to control unless they go the holistic route of cancer treatment. But I like that your focus is on doing what you can, even if, if you're exposed to these things in, in the medical industry. Absolutely. You do the best you can and you start educating yourself and the resources that are out there. Uh, not just me. I, there's there's many people like me that we are very fortunate. I'd, I'd say 10 years ago, there was a handful of us out there. I mean, people thought we were crazy. Now there's dozens and dozens and dozens. And the beauty of that is the amount of resources that are out there. And we are changing policies. We are changing uh, things in, in our government and r regulations. And that's because the people are talking. We are talking, you are talking, others are talking with their money and not buying this junk that they're trying to sell us that's on the shelf that is being manufactured with all these horrific ingredients and trying to make you believe it's soap and um, lavender uh, scent. So the it's really the voice of the people and really people taking their health into their own hands. That's my message is that we need to look at everything. It's not, I mean, we're, everybody's conscious pretty much of what you eat. Like that's part of your health. You're going to eat a junk food. You, your body is, you're going to feed it junk food and you potentially are going to get junky results. Mm. But most people know to eat healthy, but not a lot of people know that whatever you put on your skin or breathe is also part of your health. Our skin is our largest organ. So you wanna make sure you are always being aware of everything that you're using and bringing in your home. And it's just it's just becoming aware of it. I mean, my husband uh, didn't know anything. And now he, uh, he cracks me up because he will analyze everything now. <laughs> and the kids now do that. And it's just making everybody aware. My nieces and nephews will send me pictures They'll be at the store, like, and tea, is this okay? And uh, I said, well, what's the first lesson? Turn it around and look at if it has fragrance. I said, yep, turn it around. What It has fragrance. But it says on the front, I said, what's the rule? No, don't read the front. Never read the front. That's, that's a, the number one rule. And if it says natural on it, it's probably not natural. So- marketing scheme greenwashing totally scheme. greenwashing yep <laughs> yep they know we appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today and, and giving us some of those tips i definitely want to share with the audience two things um the austin air information and then also how they can reach out to you and learn more about your products for home use sure yeah my website is the green living gurus.com and the website has everything on there from the link to all of the podcasts. I have a, a, a shop tab that has uh, my teas organics. It also has a store on there that's linked to Amazon that uh, I list all these products that I, um, I would use myself, quite a bit of products, hundreds of products on there. Um, full disclosure, I make nothing on that. <laughs> They say you do. They say you make like 2%. It's baloney, but I don't care. I have it on there because when people are like, what shampoo? And I give them the link. So it's really easy for me. So, and then I have other products on there that I highly recommend or that I, I use um, from the Austin Air to uh, bedding to other things as well, to electromagnetic fields, which you touched on about <laughs> um, the, the electromagnetic fields are the waves of uh that are in our homes from our cell phones from the uh wi-fi uh, wi-fi thank you <laughs> and uh i will say absolutely turn your phone off or put it in airplane mode or put it in another room never sleep with it next year it had ever that is uh something that you do not want your head near a cell phone that is constantly getting these waves sent to it and around your head at all times. So uh, I just wanted to touch on that because I know you did. We could talk, we could talk another hour on that. So 
but there's great professionals out there that really taught me on EMFs and it's, it's something really to remember. So I appreciate that you have that list available because it's, it's good to have a list that's been vetted by someone who's an expert in the field. So we appreciate that. And we'll make sure exactly. I might do a sub link for that. So people can just click in there if they're really looking at replacing their products and, you know, quick way to, to do that, to begin that. Process. Sure. Absolutely. So, T, thank you again so much. We appreciate your wisdom sharing all of this information. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me on. And thank you for everything you're doing too, Sharon. Thank you. And thank you to all the listeners. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.